Oi. Hi. We're here. Hello there. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode <laughs> of TT Burger Burgers and Fries Game Talk with a Shake, and we're, I'm back once again with with with, the, with my two guests, Sedette the High Brother Princess from her home in Canada, and Grim Monolith from the United States States of America, just like me, who's also from the United States of America. And I'm Tony TT Burger. At this point, Burger we're Day. not even guests. We're main podcast members so. yeah main podcast members yes that's that's what you what, what you guys are in fact that's why that's why i should sure consider you guys now because you guys been on here a lot so yeah it wouldn't make sense for me to like not call you guys guys main podcast well, members let me put it to you this way you know i'm like one of those guests that you know gets kicked out of his his apartment or whatever and you're like hey i got a couch or a futon you can crash on for a little bit and, you know, I come over and I, I crash on that futon or couch and just never leave. Hmm. That's the type of guest I am. Oh, nice. I just never leave. And also, every time you fill the refrigerator, yeah, I'm I here. empty it. Yeah. <laughs> but, and uh, remind me not to invite you over. Well, remember that. <laughs> Damn. I let my secrets oh. out before... Before I could get 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 over and use them, damn it! Oh, the humanity for you! <laughs> oh, the humanity for you, sir! Oh, the humanity! <laughs> so, what do we got, TT? What do we got today? Today, we're to be got two topics here: G4 TV and that game system called the Amico, which we planned to talk about last time, but due to time restraints, we had to. And cut how are they? And uh, let's just throw out there: how are they connected? Tommy Tellerico, that's how. That's right, just, they're not directly connected, it's just Tommy Tellerico was on G4, Tommy Tellerico is the CEO of the television, that's the only reason why we kind of decided to throw them in the same episode, that's all. Don't you that. Oh, that out there. You two decided, I pretty much have little to no knowledge of this, so, well, it's, mem- it's most likely going to be these two doing a lot of the talking. Well, once you I'll learn- just be reacting. Well, once you learn more about G4 Sadat, you'll probably chime in and, and be, be shocked about what, what what had happened to this to, to this to this to this channel and stuff like how this great. And considering how you guys talked about stuff I wasn't even aware of, and I've usually reacted. <laughs> that probably. Right. Yeah, but like. I mean, yes, G4, G4 TV, in fact, like, the thing is, with, with G4, I kind of got, I got, I first got into to G4 back in, the thing like, late 2004, early 2005, when it was called G4 Tech TV, so, like, I was, was a little late to, to, to the show there and stuff, because, like, because you know, the thing is that when we had Comcast Digital Cable, we didn't have, like, Cartridge Network or, like, or, like, or, or Nickelodeon Games and Sports, and G4 was was, was one of them as well. So I kind of missed, kind of partially missed out on some of the shows that they had on there from the beginning. But the shows I remember that I grew up with were, like, Judgment Day, X-Play, Cinematech, Filter, and, um, and, uh, The Screen Savers, and which more. Became and, a, yeah, which became Attack. Of the show. Uh, of the show yeah right. and, and of course watching the e3 events there too was 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 awesome as well in fact like i i remember like i think the very the, the very first show i ever saw on there was filtered with with with, 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 the, with, with that that asian person diane Mizoda was we were just but it was just like a countdown of top 10 lists about game stuff like top 10 dreamcast games top 10 um to top 10 Final Fantasy games and, and stuff and stuff like like that. She would dress up as like Yuna from Final Fantasy 10 or Ooh La La from Space Channel 5 or so. It's just like, it was a lot of knowledge there. And of course, like 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 um, the one where they had like best graphics and stuff. And I remember Metroid, it was between Metroid Prime and, and Halo and Metroid Prime ended up winning that one, which I knew they so would. So this pretty much predates the Game Awards. Pretty much, yeah. Yes. It was, it was, it was, oh, yes. Yeah, it was By pretty much. Yeah, it was pretty much, 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 much that stuff. Of course, they also had like the top ten like um, games with games with sexual content that like um, their live stream beach volleyball and like a BMX triple X and all that stuff, which I've yeah, and just 
they had it. That, that, that was was a great show. And then I then I then the next show I saw was like um, Icons. That was another show I mentioned. Icons. Icons was just like the history of like gaming gaming thing companies like Capcom or SquareSoft or history of the dream. Like talking about the Dreamcast or the PlayStation or the yeah, Nintendo, or the GameCube and stuff and just all that that all that that stuff. And definitely all, all good stuff that they kind of they covered. But you know, let's kind of just I'm not, go back but, to the beginning. Oh yeah, go ahead. You know what? What's where was G four from? When did it start? You know, what was the point of it? Because it certainly wasn't the first, um, wasn't the first group of video game centered programs. Because those actually came out of the nineties. There were, you know, programs, especially out of the UK, that were all about video games. But you know, it's as far. As I can remember, G4 was from around, what, 2002, started by Comcast, I believe, because it was originally on only Comcast uh, networks. Yeah. And, and and that was before Comcast was even in my area. Um, I think we had a different cable company back then. Comcast hadn't bought everything yet. Yeah, it was, it, was, owns- it was AT&T. It was AT&T Digital Cables. That's probably what it was. AT&T Digital Cables probably what it was. Cause that's what it was called for us before Comcast bought them out. Right before Comcast bought them out, yeah. But but Comcast is the company that owned G4 TV, just like today. I mean, Comcast owns NBC. They own Universal. They're just a gigantic powerhouse of a company that owns half of Hollywood Mm -hmm. and and most of the cable television and internet in the United States. But um, you know, they started G4 back in 2002, and it was supposed to be a rival channel to Tech TV. So I don't remember if it, do you remember Tech TV? Uh I didn't I didn't really think that my when I had Comcast HTT Digital Cable I didn't have that channel so I didn't have yeah. a channel back then. I got it in like two thousand and four, like like back when mm. I was like the like spring of two thousand four. So I kinda missed out on there. Yeah, so Tech TV had a lot of, you know computer programs on it, basically. Um it also had a few video game programs on it as well. Um, but Comcast started G4 as kind of like a competitor to Tech TV back in 2002. Um, in 2004, uh, Tech TV and G4 actually had merged into G4 Tech TV. And then I think shortly afterwards, they kind of just dropped the Tech TV brand in the United States and just called it G4. Although in Canada, they still called it Tech TV. So up there, G4, what was G4 in the United States was still called Tech TV in Canada. Yeah. I don't G- know why they made that decision, but that's just what they did with it. Yeah, because like it's just, it's just sad that like um, because this was a TV channel for video gamers, and I mean, of course this was pre YouTube before this is the only place you could find this stuff, and that like of course like. Like, like, showing all the stuff, like, um, also, about to mention, um, Cinematech, which had cutscenes from games, which, which made you want to buy the game, the set game, too. And, of course, like, the two most important shows for me that were on G4 were Judgment Day and X-Play. Judgment Day was, like, a review show hosted by Tommy Well, Tommy. They, they, were, they were both review shows. Well, I'm, I'm, mistaken, I'm explaining, right? but let me explain both of them. It was basically J- Judgment Day was mainly just just reviews because like they reviewed games that like they reviewed like consoles like like small like consoles or like apps or like like devices or stuff like that, and you had Tommy Tarico and Victor Lucas reviewing give giving their opinions of each game and stuff like that, and at the end it'd be like on the positive side this and this and this or this and this and this this and this on the negative side that 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 just like doing that that's what at the charm was two people like debating on why they liked the game, why they hated the game or so. In fact like t- I remember like like Tommy Tarico, his two worst games that he ever reviewed on there were High Heat Baseball twenty oh two and Men in Black Two Alien Escape. I remember like um he gave Men in Black Two Alien yep. I-, I remember he a gave point five. Point five point five yep, he gave it a point five out of ten. Yeah, because that game the game was shit. Ouch. Nicole. Yeah, and of course, High Heat Baseball, he gave a zero because of, like, of how bad the game looked and how the game played and how it was outdated and everything. He was like, he, yeah. Of course, like, a three point, a three, a three, 
I'm giving it a zero. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like that, that's what he would do. And like, so that added charm to it. Of course, of course, like they had like the verses between this game versus that game and stuff. And sometimes it'd be in a tie. Sometimes it'd be like um, it'd be like it'd be Ninja Guide Gaiden. Guiden Black versus Nightshade okay, or something like that. Okay, this is just my opinion, but you should never compare games like that. Because it can end up ruining your experience with a game. Well, here's the thing. Mm. Certain games that they gave negative, yeah. negative scores to, I still played because me being a game, me being a big gamer, I gave some game a chance and stuff. Like I did not not agree, I, I did not agree with like um certain reviews that they, but but I did agree with on something like on I did, I did agree with the review on I did agree with the review on Dragon Ball Z Saga, and you know, how bad that game is and stuff. I remember, I remember like 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 agreeing with them on that, and like I did I did I did agree with them on the review of, of Rumble Roses because like that game was just a just just an average wrestling game with like women in it and stuff that that stuff with mud wrestling and everything. And I me I remember like thinking so that, a wrestling game with a lot of <laughs> well bad voice acting, lame story, the fact that you can't choose the Japanese knees audio either, and the lip sync matches up to the Japanese, and the fact like it's just there's only two modes in the game, the story mode and the exhibition mode and stuff. So yeah, it was it was it was a shallow <laughs> you low, low package. You are so obsessed with Japanese voice acting. Well, it's yeah, who I am, and of course, like I do, I did agree with there with I their. I know it's part of who you are. Yes, I know. <laughs> I said that you are completely right. I didn't know you were part Japanese, Tony, but I'm not. I respect that. I'm not. I just, I'm just a big fan of Jap Jap Japanese stuff, but like um. But of course, like, I also, like, because of Judgment Day, I learned about, like, how bad the GameCube versions of Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3, the ports of, of the GameCube ports of Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 Nemesis were, because they're basically the same game, just slightly updated graphics. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember when, 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 when Resident Evil 0 came out, they announced Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 Nemesis were going to be, be on the PS2, were going to be on the GameCube, but they, but they didn't really update the graphics or anything like that. It, just, it was just basically like on par with the Dreamcast version, just slightly updated graphics and just move the frame rate. So basically, you're getting, you're getting the same game you already have on the PlayStation version, and I almost got sucked into buying them. Now, that wasn't until I saw, I saw the review on Judgment Day. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the only, um, the only one that got an update was the first one on the mm -hmm. GameCube. The, the other ones are exactly the same. Yeah. And of course, like, talking about, but like, Judgment Day, I remember like, like, seeing the last episode where they talked about Perfect Dark Zero and talked about, about the Xbox 360. And yeah, I just remember. Well, Judgment Day, I, I, I believe those programs went beyond Tommy Tellerica. I think he had left them and they were still going, but they had lost a lot of popularity. Not unlike a Attack of the show, where you know uh, Kevin Pereira basically terminated his contract, and you know he was the last host, the longest running host on that show. Um, maybe even argu arguably the most popular host, uh, unless you want to throw Olivia Munn's name in there. But you know she was an actress that was in a bunch of other stuff. Not you know she wasn't the biggest Hollywood name ever, but she was a one of the biggest Hollywood names, or maybe even the biggest Hollywood name that was ever on G4. Yeah. You know? I know that Sarah Underwood, who uh, was on Attack of the Show, she was a she was a Playboy Playmate, I believe, um, back in the mid-2000s. So I guess she kind of had a name for herself as well. But between the three of them, I, I would say that they were probably the biggest names outside of tech tv g4 you know kevin Pereira after that had went on to start a, a twitch channel which ended up in total failure and i don't want to get into the negativity around his projects after the fact but you know um i don't know the the, the sh show was canceled what five or six months after kevin left it attack yeah. of the show so yeah. that was wh when was that that w was that like uh 2000 12 was it canceled? Even I don't even remember. The thing. I, even I don't remember because that's how long it's been. But like, um, I just remember. Because uh, G4, G4 was on the year till um, 2014. I don't know how long Attack of the Show lasted, but. Um, yeah. But um, for me. So what did you. Talking about, you're talking about a lot about reviews here. Let me get your feeling on um, kind of like X Play. Yeah. Um, 
and the two most popular people that were on X Play for me, the ones that stand Adam out the Sessler most were Adam Sessler and Morgan. Well, Adam Sessler and and Morgan Webb. And how 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 did those reviews strike you? And how did those two reviewers strike you? Well, in the beginning, like with X Play, they were they were a really good. They were great. Like just that, they basically were fair and 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 gave. They were fair in what they talked about. And I remember, like when I first started there, it it, it was funny. Like it was funny because like. They just talked about the game, game views and video games like that. Just like Adam Sessler is definitely one of one of my, my favorite gaming journalists. That that is, but like after he was let go from G4, he he was he he went to Rev3 Games for a while and, uh, until he retired and 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 and, and quit the journalism thing altogether. So he's one of my my most respectful. He was one of the, the people who uh, who was actually one of my inspirations for game reviews and stuff because like he was funny and stuff. But like I remember, like in the beginning, like they reviewed all types of games. They wouldn't just like like there was a new episode each time. Just like they had some funny skits there here and there. And I was basically just have a lot, a lot of references to video gaming and everything. But that wasn't until to early 2006 when when they made changes to G4 and X Play was different. Now they just they just like wasted time talking about like t t talking about stuff they already they already they already, already talked about. And like they spent more time on skits that had nothing to do with gaming, and the fact that that they're like, they like they had like like, like references to like celebrities like the Olsen twins or something like that or or so in the reviews, and the reviews like became totally completely biased. Like they were they're like, and you can't really really blame you can't you can't really blame really really blame. Am Sessler or Morgan Reb for the bad reviews? If you want to know why, it wasn't in their own words. They, they were, they were. Um, what's what's the word am I looking for? They pretty much were just reading from a script that somebody made for them and stuff. Is 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 what it was. And I forgot to mention the show Cheat, which I'll talk about about later on. But like, they just started, just starts to they started to, to, to becoming like like something you didn't want to want to watch more because like even even the set looked looked look, i didn't like how the set looked. the set was all futuristic with all this like this like futuristic with, like cubes and cylinders and stuff and and round brown circles and everything it just it's pretty much 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 became, became a turn off for me because you know yeah it says well yeah made... and think about all the sets that attack of the show went through they changed they were changing them all like basically on a yearly basis it's kind of similar. This is kind of this is gonna be a bad, bad comparison. It's kind of similar to what the VH1 count, top ten counter went through. Like they had, they, they had they had many studio changes and stuff before they started to uh, take it to the streets and stuff like that and such. And then they had a new studio which only lasted about like I don't know about like um five months or so. And then then when they changed changed the show from the top ten top twenty countdown to the twenty hosted by that YouTuber Shan Coffee, the new studio was like all pink and everything like that and stuff. It was like even the number graphics were pink, everything was all pink in it and stuff. And just they made like more of a comedy show instead of talking about the videos and stuff. It's all about about the host Shan Coffee who didn't know anything about music or anything. So they pretty much much changed it. But that's off topic though. I'm just 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 saying what they did there because you know I mean, like Adam, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb were were like true gamers, but but they got taken advantage of when G4 changed everything around, and you know they just it's just, it's just sad because like I have respect for Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. There there's nothing wrong with what wrong with them. They they're they're not the ones to blame for X Play sucking. It's just all the new people who wanted to make changes to to the to the channel. That's why the why they they changed it all. And even then, like after Adam Sessler left. He he was fired. Because, that's when everything started going downhill. It was like X Play was just just even though though X Play was kind of a dying show, it still had some life in it with Adam Sessler and Morgan if Webb. If it ain't broken, don't, don't fix, fix it. Like what Sadat says there, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I just remember like just being shot, like just that them bashing games like um like um Alan Let me think. Or, they, 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 they were praising Halo 3 with no with with a passion and bashing like Devil May Cry 4 and bashing games that weren't like Gears of War graphics or didn't have Mega Man in it or so and weren't weren't like Halo or so so that was the thing. They probably hated Capcom when Capcom decided, hey, we're going to cancel all these Mega Man games. <laughs> the funny thing is about X Play that there was there was a parody series on YouTube called 
S play, S play, and people and a lot, a lot, a lot of gamers on YouTube made parody, made parody videos of of, of S play with S play, like today on S play. In fact, if I was was making games game reviews at the time, I probably would have made a parody or so of S play. But the S play play parody genre is pretty much long dead. But it was, but they, 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 it was, it was fun for, it was fun for sure, definitely. Like like watching that stuff, but like. It's just a shame because like when G4 changed, they canceled a lot a lot of their shows like Filter, G4TV.com, Cheat, Icons, Judgment Day, and and of course Screen Saves became Attack of the Show and, and X Play B Clay pretty much had a new well, set and everything. Screen Savers became Attack of the Show back in like oh six. Well okay. So that was a that was kind of a while ago. Well oh six was when G four started making those changes by getting rid of rid of the video game shows and adding like like all that syndicated crap like Star Trek, The Man Show and Cops and Cheaters and um the block and, and all and, and like um Ninja Warrior and stuff. And like I we'll talk about about the bad part part of G4 a G4 TV later. Oh, well, you do know that at the beginning of the year, well this was actually last year, they had announced they were going to relaunch G4 TV. Yeah, I heard about that. that. Right? I heard about that, but I but I am not looking but I'm not looking forward to it because it's probably going to be the same thing that, that that was before because you know, like um like um I I just remember that like being upset like um I remember like thinking, speaking of of the show cheat I I remember Corey Rouse he was he was hilarious he 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 showed me like a bunch of cheat codes that helped me on some games I was stuck that I was stuck in and then like he was I cool mean, wait, wait, wait. I just just want to mention that G four is not not totally even dead now I mean they still they still exist as an organization on YouTube. And back in late January, I think around the end of the month, maybe beginning of February, they had announced that they're returning shows, and they didn't give dates, but they said that they were going to be relaunching um, based on Attack of the Show and X-Play. And they didn't really say who was going to be doing X-Play. I don't remember if they mentioned who was going to be the host of X-Play, but they did say that Kevin Pereira was going to return to do Attack of the Show. Hey, um, Titi, maybe yeah, you well, should see if you could apply. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but here's the problem, I think, and TT, you can get into this a little bit when you're talking about uh, the transition to what you see as kind of the, the beginning of the end of G4, although it took another six years, six to seven years before it actually hit its demise, because I think it was on the year to 2014, and Attack of the Show was actually on the year to 2013. Um because you're saying it happened like that transition happened around 2006, but let's let's be fair. What else happened around 2006? Well, like with G4 or in general? Just in general on the internet. Um, the new consoles came out. Well, yeah, okay, the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Uh, although the Xbox 360 came out in 05, but uh, yes, the that the seventh generation of consoles was launched. But what was happening in the world of the internet? I don't know what was happening. I don't remember. The explosion of a new video platform. That's taken YouTube. the world by storm. Exactly, YouTube. <coughs> 06 is when YouTube finally became something that um, started to creep into people's homes as a household name. Um, was it popular in 06? Not not. Not super popular, and I think that's before Google had bought it. Um, what let's what year did Google buy YouTube? I think it was oh seven. I don't remember. I, think I, thought, I thought it was oh eight or something, but yeah, it did. I thought that was like two thousand fifteen. I don't know. Oh uh, six, oh six, I guess. So YouTube was only around for a year before Google bought it, actually. It says uh, Google purchased YouTube uh, on October 9th, 2006, for 1.6 size, 1.65 billion in stock. The sale was completed on November 13th of that year. That is a lot of stock for a video platform that only had been around for a year, but it exploded in popularity. I, I, I think if you, if you really think back to the beginning of 06 and it's easier for me because I'm a little bit older um, 
I remember everyone was like, YouTube, 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 check out YouTube, right? And um, it just kind of exploded. And you had shows like AVGN and Cinemassacre, which were debuting on, on YouTube. And those shows were becoming incredibly popular. And they became more popular over the years. And I think when we look at what happened to G4, I think you need to take in consideration not only the decisions G4 itself made, which you're going to be talking about, like the syndication, like bringing on syndicated shows, like Cops, like, like, um, like all the other shows you were talking about, but also the rise of the YouTuber. You didn't need shows like Attack of the Show anymore when you get into the 2010s because they were high production YouTubers doing the same thing, maybe even better. Um, and that's just the way it went. And now anyone with a camera can literally reproduce exactly everything that G4 TV was doing on Judgment Day, on X-Play, on Attack of the Show, in their living room, with their iPhone. <laughs> and that's kind of the world we live in now. And, and that, some people can pull it off better than G4, I'm assuming. Yes, right. There's so many creative people out there. Um, I, I think as the iPhones, uh, go, going into about, what, 2010, 2011, when the iPhones really got some decent cameras on them, Everyone had a camera in their pocket, you know? I mean, iPhone 6s can film good enough video to, to put on the Internet. And I, the iPhone 6 is what, from 2015, 2014? Yeah. Around that time is when mm -hmm. the iPhone 6 is from. So I think that this is a big factor in what, what happened to G4 TV. I think that they weren't putting out content that, <clears throat> other people couldn't put out um, and and weren't putting out and their competition did become YouTube and speaking a little bit about their plans and what they were talking about their plans are for the future uh, about relaunching they were kind of like hinting at using YouTube and YouTubers as a way to relaunch their brand and that's what they're doing now so if you go to the G4 TV YouTube channel, you can see that's kind of the direction they've gone, but they haven't relaunched completely yet. They haven't um, made any TV deals that I've seen, um, so I don't know where they are with all of that right now. They said that they would be launching sometime in the summer of 2021, but that was at the beginning of the year, and we haven't gotten any new information, but I think that that's part of it. Tony, and that's something you need to think about when you're kind of like thinking about the the rise and fall of G4. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I understand that. There, I'm just saying, like, that even still, even though they did have YouTube, it could have been nice to keep all that, all those shows on there. Is what I mean. That's all it is. I'm trying to say there, but like, um, I I just just getting back to what I wanted to talk about here. Like, when it came to that, like, it's just when they canceled all those shows, they actually brought back, they actually brought back some of some of the shows. That that they canceled like icons filter and cheat. Hold on a second. <sighs> like they like I didn't really talk about like getting back on top of cheat here and stuff. Just that like 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 I loved like like that because like introduced like, some games I had problems with and stuff. I mean Corey Rouse was funny and of course it became Pringle cheat Pringles gamer guys. They got the Pringles as Pringles as a sponsorship and like that and that was really really cool there. But like. When they canceled Cheat, they brought it back, and they had this host named Kristen Holt, who was in who was in an, an American an Idol, an Idol contestant who didn't really who didn't win, and they had her on there, and she was not funny. It's like she it's like she knew nothing about games, and she she was only on there, just 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 to get a paycheck. And because and because they because, just wanted they wanted to put a pretty face there yeah. to get people to watch it basically that's why and she wasn't funny either so like she just like she just sat and thought like like she was reading off cue cards the whole time and i'm like cory rouse was funny with his catchphrase would like you to down, I do throw not the know what i am doing so i am reading off of the telephone 
Sure. Yes. But you would not know that because you are on the other side of the TV. Ha ha ha. Yeah, because like with Corey Rouse, he had his catchphrase, when life gets you down, throw in the god mode and keep kicking butt. See you next time on Cheating. And he, and he was funny, in fact. Like, he, yeah, he, he, yeah, he, yeah, he was funny. But like, Kristen Holt was just, nothing against Kristen Holt, but she just, just wasn't funny. I mean, like, just that, and, and a lot, a lot, a lot of, the, of the cheats that she talked about, you could easily look up on the internet. Like, some of them, like, in, like, Medal of Honor, I did not, not, not know about, like, um, like, putting, like, the fancy... The fancy, the fancy battleships on your heads, just on their heads as hats or so, and just, just, and just other things like like that. But of course, like I remember, like like one of the stupid bit cheats they had was about Ridge Racer on talking about how 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 to, how to like speed up with the slipstream, which they tell you that in the game itself. So pretty much, why am I even? Why did he have to tell us this? People, even people who don't have the game, would probably figure 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 that out. And just yeah, just stupid. And of course, with icons. Oh man, we gotta talk about icons here. Icons used to be all about gaming stuff. Then it was cancelled, but then they brought back and stuff. And of course, the original icons was still on, but it was called Game Makers, and it aired like around six o'clock in the morning or something. That's called Game Makers, and they changed and they called the new icons icons. And the whole thing with this new icons, it was nothing about gaming. It was about like um, hmm, let me think here. It was basically like like they had stuff like about J J Abrams. The Suicide Girls. The Suicide Girls is like a model site with like, it's that with like hot with hot women and all that and stuff. And of course they had like a Mark Echo, Michelle Rodriguez, Lala Palooza, um, Sasha Baron Baron Cohen, Frank Miller. Comedian. Frank Miller, the uh, artist, the uh, uh, comic book writer. Yeah, and Seth Green. I mean. The none, comedian. Of, none of this has anything to do with video games. So why is this here? I don't know. Especially, especially uh, like the Suicide Girls, which is like, which is like an adult, a somewhat what adult model site from one from one. Uh, well, it kind of like I, I, I dare I use the term edgier models. Yeah. Uh, uh, sometimes goth, sometimes edgier models. A uh, lot of girls with as, as they as they say with ink on them, tattoos, stuff like that. That's kind of like what the Suicide Girls were. Yeah. Or, or Pierce. A lot of a lot of models with piercings. That's what the site was. Yeah, cause like it's just it kind of when I when I saw not it, not that I was a fan, but I know I know I know what I, things are. I've I know around. what you are. Because I saw it. The, yep. Sounds like a case of hey, we need more views. Let's get some hotties on here. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like in it. that case, I agree. But a lot of the stuff you list you listed off, and I'm not gonna say Seth Green is pop culture. I can't claim that, but Frank Miller. Uh, that'd be pop culture because he was a comic book writer, right? He had a lot to do with Batman, and he had a lot to do with uh, movies that were coming out. Um, but still, so, this, is on the, this, is, this, is, this is on a video game-related channel, and it's on this. I mean, they got the stuff on here. I mean, come on, people. I mean, well, well, let's talk about Attack of the Show. Was Attack of the Show, which was which was originally screensavers, which was a very tech-orientated show. Uh, mostly about like computers and tech not just about video games was attack of the show really a video game show no but it helped it was about computers no. and computers was was so no no game. attack of the show was no, a screen saver screen savers screen savers screen savers was a show i'm talking about attack of the show as i just said attack uh screen savers was a show that was kind of from the old guard the, the tech tv guard so it was about computers and um, peripherals and uh, hardware and software, something like that. But the show it turned into, that it morphed into Attack of the Show, what was that show about? Good question. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a video game show per se. It was more of a pop culture show. It, it was more of like what we kind of have on YouTube today, like... Uh, Clownfish TV or Spawn Wave or um, any of these big news pop culture channels. Um, they talked about anime. They talked about um, tech news. They talked about video game. They talked about comics. Um, Attack of the Show actually had a segment um, I, by a comic critic. I think, what was his name? Chris Gore. Chris Gore was his name. And I have never seen him in anything else. Maybe he's on YouTube. I don't know. But he only covered comics. 
So they would have the 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 you know the comic show once or twice a week, or uh, might have been once a week where he talked about comic book. So I think when Attack of the Show started, I think the whole channel went towards a pop culture kind of direction, not just a video game direction, because I th- think that they saw you couldn't survive just on shows that dealt with video games. Um, that's what happened. And that's what Attack of the Show was. It wasn't just a show about video games. In fact, it was it had very little to do with video games, except for video game news. Well, yeah, but that's, that, that had some video game, video game references in it, but just that, I remember like with the screen Why, like, why, wait, 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 why wait. bring... bring why bring on shows like Ninja Warrior? Let me ask you this. You were talking about G4 bringing on Syndicos. Why did they bring on Ninja Warrior? Mm. Do me. Because it was a it was a pop culture show that uh visual Japan and I know they had American Ninja Ninja Warrior and then they had, you know, the normal Ninja Warrior show which is out of Japan. And because uh pop culture is so full of things from Japan and Japanese culture, Ninja Warrior was was part of that. So that's why they brought that show on, because they knew that those were the types of people they were trying to attract. So that's the reason why they brought that on. And they showed tons of Ninja Warrior on G4. Um, I know that they also later brought on shows like Cops because the show at that point was kind of aging and they were just looking for cheap cheap shows to syndicate which is probably why they brought that on but probably so but even then like it's just and of course like um they had like that I had like this uh Formula Drift racing show with hot models and cars and stuff which just like I just thought, just not my cup of tea. And of course, like Fast Lane was on there too. And of course, they had the Man Show. I mean, when the Man Show came out, it was funny, but just that it has I mean, the Man Show was aged poorly and just was very, very out of touch with like modern, with like modern day shows and everything. So it just wasn't really worth it because, like you know, just something about about that show that so just like it was just just not 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 just not very interesting to do. And of course, oh my God. They added well, the, the, wait a, a crappy show that they had to air on there was was that show was that was that was that show called Lost which I I thought Lost was just nothing more than a than an overly dramatized tized show. That, you, you talking about J.J. Abrams? No, Lost? no, the show Lost. You know, like with a strand on the island and stuff like that. That one. Yeah, J.J. Abrams, Kirkman, Lost. I mean, that was a pretty good show. I didn't like it. It wasn't my cup of tea. I just you, didn't care for it. You you don't like science fiction? I do like science fiction, but just that with the show Lost, I just found it boring as all. How, how much of it did you watch? The first season. I mean, the first season was okay. The show got a lot better later on, and then had a terrible ending. I I'm not going to. Uh, well, there's, 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 this we're not here to talk about Lost, but you you can look it up. The the ending was a cop out badly written ending because they just didn't want to do the show anymore it's too bad because lost was an incredible show and i think it was one of jj abrams best creations i mean it's not literally thinking... the show that it's literally the show that law la- in my opinion launched jj abram and alex kirksman's career because they're mean... the two that basically did it I mean, nothing against JJ Abrams. And, uh, the, I, I respect the guy, so I just, I just did not care for that show. Is all. Which is which is fine. Not everyone's gonna like every show. No. Um, but I, I mean, for them to get lost on that channel, yeah. Again, they were just looking for easily syndicated shows. Now lost is now lost. <laughs> lost and forgotten. <laughs> it's lost in time. The the man show. I I think I also think was a terrible choice for them. Because by the time they syndicated that on G4, right, it was already an old show, right? Didn't that show run from the late 90s to the early 2000s? Yes, it, it, it started only out ran like four, four or five years. It was already yeah, eight. it only ran four or five years. It what? didn't run that long. It had maybe five seasons. I think so. I don't remember because like I saw it on Comic Central at the time. I thought it was funny, but just like 
Look at that show was not as fun as I thought it was. It's just my Yeah, opinion. okay, I, I just looked it up. It went six seasons. It went from ninety nine to two thousand and four. So yeah, so by the time it by the time it got on G four, I mean the show was already over. It already run its course. There were no new episodes being shown. But I think it was the same thing with cops. I think everything they were showing from cops was also just old reruns. So yeah, so you're right. They were just looking for easily syndicated shows. But here's another way to look at it from their perspective and what they were trying to do. And I, I think that some of these were bad shows to have on there. And I don't understand why they put Lost on there or why they were trying to get sci-fi shows. But it was to get easily syndicated shows. But what it was is they were trying to appeal towards what people were calling back then is the MTV demo. You know, that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to... Become uh, what they were? Yeah, they were trying to bring in the MTV demographic. I mean, what happened to G4 at the end? Didn't they change the name to uh, the Esquire Network? I don't yes, know. Yes, in... Uh, Yes, in um, uh, in late 2012, <clears throat> G4 studio program ceased in preparation for planned relaunch as Esquire Net Network as part of a licensing deal between uh, Esquire magazine. Uh, Esquire um, ultimately replaced uh, replaced it with Style Network instead. Um, so G4 announced at the end of 2014 it would cease all operations. So it never even got to the stage of being Esquire Network. It was canceled. So it, it was canceled even before that happened. So, like, in other words, G4 is not going to be rebranded or anything. It's not going to be coming back in a comeback. Well, um, but this was years ago. Uh, the, the comeback was announced last year. Um, the G4 TV uh, YouTube channel is active. Um, they mostly just do um, critical role type shows, you know, the D&D &D show, Critical Role. They they have a lot of that stuff. Not Critical Role, but their own show on G4 TV. They have the G4 logo. And at the beginning of this year, um, at the I think at the end of January, beginning of February, somewhere along those lines, um, they had announced that they were going to relaunch Attack of the Show and X-Play. And they said that Kevin... Pereira was going to be coming back, and I haven't heard anything since. So I'm, I'm going to assume that's all still in the kind of planning zone, and that because COVID pushbacks, they haven't gotten any further with that stuff, but they still have their branding, they still have their um, YouTube channel, so is it coming back? I don't, I don't know for sure. I just know what the last announcements were, which were you know, a couple months ago, what, like four or five months ago now, um, they had announced the, the return of X-Play and um, Attack of the Show. But we have, I haven't seen anything since. So I don't know if someone listening out there can leave something in the comments telling us, you know, where where they are in in production with all of this stuff. Yeah, then let us know. But back to like what I was saying, Richard, so the, the other show I forgot to mention that, that, they, that, they, that, they, that they did change when it, when it came back was Filter. It's like... Filter was, was hosted by um, Beth Ortowski, who was the wife of Howard Stern. And the, the topic was just like, top 10 parties, top 10, 10 this and that. It had nothing to do with games. It only lasted about like 13 episodes well, before it got canceled. again, you're answering your own question, or you're supporting my own my premise, which is, why would they have a show like that on the channel? I know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying it, it, it proves my premise, which is they were trying to appeal towards an MTV crowd, right? Because MTV was, like, what was on MTV at this time? MTV was all about reality television shows. I mean, as far as I know, MTV is still only about reality television shows. There hasn't been a music a uh, video on MTV uh, in decades. It it still exists. It's all reality television now, and a show about parties is you know basically catering towards that demographic. You know that's what that demographic likes to watch, yeah, like shows culture, like man. The Bachelor. Well, it's not those aren't, those aren't even. I wouldn't even call reality television pop culture. Pop culture is different. 
pop culture is like anime or or toys or video games. That's that's what I would consider pop culture. The only good I thing w- that happened when they rebranded did did the channel. I think the only good thing was like Candace Bailey was on was on Steps of Attack of Shoujin and she and she's one of my favorite and she's and she's one of my favorite actresses, Candace oh. Bailey. Yeah, she was one of the last hosts, I believe. Yeah, she she started off. I I first learned about her and Nickelodeon's Yupik Live when she was twenty one years old. She like did it from two thousand two to two thousand five. She was like twenty twenty one one years old, but she was well, she was she she was with this this um I'm, I'm trying trying to think what she hosted. But she was with this um Brent. Popolizo and Candace Bailey, also Pick Boy, Antonio Navis and stuff, and yeah, it was just basically like that is how I first learned about 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 about, about Candace Bailey. Yeah, Candace Bailey, uh, she was good. Yeah, and she was she was on, you know, at the at the end of G4's run, and um, you know, if Attack of the Show does does get relaunched with Kevin, I I hope that she's someone that comes back. I I don't think that. They're going to get Olivia Munn back. I I know that when the announcements happened back in January, a lot of people were like, "Oh, X Play's coming back. You need to get Adam. You need to get Morgan. You got to get him back. You got to get Kevin. You got to get Olivia Munn." And that's I like, don't know. I like that's really going to happen. Adam Susser, yeah, you you said you said it. Adam Susser's retired, right? Yeah. So because Revision I, Three games, like I forgot to mention, the Revision Three, like the Amy Soda from Filter joined that that site before before they closed the website in 2017. But like, yeah. But if there's one thing we're gonna talk about about, about G4 with, with how with how they went bad with, it's the E3 event. It's the E3 three of it's their E3 showing of the E3. That's something we definitely talk about before we move on to that that Amico thing. Cause absolutely, uh, did do it now. Bring it up. The E3, yeah. I remember like um, yeah. That, that's how I first learned about E. That's how how like seeing E3, seeing like 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 the boot babes and like seeing what was going on over there and stuff. But then, like, in 2006, when it was, like, Kevin Pereira and Olivia Hunt and that ancestor Morgan Webb hosting, it was just terrible. It was just, just, just trailers of games, and that and that was it. And they would, like, cut to commercial when, when something good would be happening. And the the interviews, like, pretty much had nothing to do about field games. Just, like, oh, we're just going to do this layer and stuff. And just, like, it was just, like, um, just showing, showing the trailers of the game and showing, like, um... This grindhouse skit from what I heard. I'm not. I don't, I don't really. I. Not, I mean, nothing against grind against that. The move that that nothing against that. But just don't really care for it. And just like E3 was just just like kind of. This was like it, it was before E3 became what what it is today and stuff. But like, we'll talk about that in a future in a future future podcast. Yeah. But um. You know, E3 is not even something that necessarily needs to exist anymore. Anyway, I mean, all of these companies kind of. They can just do their own announcements because yeah. you know video and streaming platform is, platforms are so are so prevalent today. I know that we we, we we see what what they can do. Nintendo has their own directs. Uh, Sony yeah. has their own has has their own events. Microsoft has their own events. Yeah, they don't need these combined shows for these events anymore. I know uh, when it, they're good and ready. Really when they're bad. good and ready. No, no, when they're good and ready. They'll announce what they need to announce on their own time, on their own channels, and that's just it. And that's I think that's how the future is going to be. Yeah. In fact, like I also still should have mentioned that like they had that they had that 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 that, that eight bit show called Code Monkeys, which I thought was interesting idea on paper. When you think of it, the premise and everything that just feels like like you're watching a watered down version of South Park. It feels like at times when you when you smart when you watch Code Monkeys, but. Code and also had 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 Spaceballs, the animated series, and I forget, I forget another 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 show. I remember Code Monkeys. Yeah, I mean, I just said I thought it was interesting for an eight bit show would be in in, in, a, in an animated series, but just that looking back at it, it, just isn't as as interesting as it comes off. I mean, sure, the only cool thing is like the art style and everything. That's all basically. All it's just like, oh, we do care about the games. Look at this. We have an eight bit. We have we have we have we have an eight bit graphic anime show. We care about the gamers, right? Duh. It's one thing to show us an 8-bit to show anybody that wants to make an animation could just do that. Right. I Not agree. very original. No. In fact, like... The writing for it, you know, it, it's it's hard for me to remember a lot of it, but I don't remember the writing for it being overly funny, and Sadat is 100% right. Anyone 
on, especially now and even back then, anyone could produce a show with 8-bit characters in it. It's the voice acting and the writing and the comedy that's hard to do. And I don't think from my memory, my vague memory of it, I don't think that it was very, very good because if the show was better, I would probably remember it better. You know what I mean? But my memory of Code Monkeys is just kind of like hazy. I don't remember any specific bits or or. I just remember the, the talking. I just so remember the talking. it couldn't have been that good. I just remember the talking. That's all I remember about. But the funny thing is, like, it's just yeah, the stuff like that couldn't save. No matter no matter what Chief Four tried to do, they couldn't be saved. At, at, after the original people were gone, they canceled all all the shows and everything. It was basically they just Chief Four just yeah just fell sadly into it an abyss. Just pretty much fell on its butt. Yeah. And just didn't want to get up. Yeah. But now we we talked a lot about G4. We got about ten minutes left left in this podcast before we end it. We're gonna let's finish to this team off and talk about that about, about the Amico and Grim Molly is gonna sure. talk about this. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just give my, my piece quickly. Look, I, I'm not gonna in the ten minutes that we have, I'm not gonna delve into all the drama that's involved between uh different uh communities of YouTubers <laughs> fighting each other. Um, over this system, you know, people calling um, some people shills for being friends with Tommy Tellerico and blindly following this, following the system and, and saying do it's going to be Tom- good no matter what. And here's and- the thing, I, I, you know, I do respect Tommy Tellerico because he, he made he made a lot of good music. He, he was awesome on, on Judgment Day and Electric Play, which I didn't really talk about. I didn't really see that show that much, but he was a great, he's a great guy, you know, I respect him, but he is actually the, the cousin of Steven Tyler from Aerosmith, no joke, and, uh, Yes, and he's, he's made, he's made that abundantly clear over and over and over, and in, in all of his interviews, it's brought up, he's the cousin of Aerosmith, he's the cousin of Aerosmith. Especially I've even talked to Kelly, I've, I've been on, I've... Story. Exactly. Look, I've been on podcasts with Tommy Tellerico. I've talked to Tommy Tellerico, okay? He's literally made a habit of going around on YouTube and talking to anyone that'll listen to him and have him on a podcast to talk about the Amica, which I think is a marketing mistake and one of his marketing mistakes. I don't think it does a system any good to go around and uh, constantly be communicating with and going on podcasts um, on channels that are a thousand subs or under a thousand subs. No, no offense, TT. I know you're at 600 subs, but really, would you expect someone, the, the CEO of a video game company that's trying to launch a new system, would, would you think it's with, you know, it's a good use of their time to come to you and say, hey, Tony, um, that it's worth the time of a CEO of a of a company that's trying to come out with a new video game system or a video game to go around constantly searching out small YouTubers, doing interviews with them. What? Let's say Tommy Tellerico came to you and said, hey, Tony, do you want to do an interview so, so I can talk about my, my Amico that's coming out? I mean, how much PR, how much exposure can Tommy Tellerico get out of talking to sub 1,000 sub YouTubers and that's what he's done. He's wasted his time running around talking to lots and lots and lots and lots of little content creators and it's not gotten him anywhere except I, bad drama. I think this is just my theory but I think he thinks that us smaller people would be easy to use compared to the big people. That might be the case, but it's easy to use versus how much exposure you actually get for the amount of time you put in. And there's clearly no one advising Tommy Tellerico on how to um, how to how to do PR for his company. Correctly. Uh, yeah, there's clearly no one advising. Um, there's just no one there. I mean, he has said so many things that are really stupid in interviews. He's made despairingly stupid remarks about gamers. He's made despairingly stupid remarks about Nintendo that just aren't true. Um, A person who used to be a Nintendo fan. A man who made music for Nintendo games. Because we're talking about Tommy Tellerico, right? 
We're right. talking about a guy who made sound effects and music for games that were on the GameCube and game systems even older than that. And he's now going around talking crap about Nintendo just so he can market his system. But look, all that drama aside, people can disagree with me that he's creating drama or he isn't creating drama or he is or he's marketing correctly or he isn't. It's whatever. That's not really what I want to say. What I want to say is the entire vision of the system that he's trying to market, the games he's trying to market, I think is not going to work. I think it's going to fail. And I think it's going to be a lot like the Ouya. And I don't think Tommy Tellerico is trying to scam anyone with the system. I think it really exists. He's got prototypes. He's shown off games that exist for it. He's shown us the gimmicky controller. Um, but he keeps comparing this system to the Wii. This is a system for casual gamers. It's not for the hardcore gamers. It's for the casual gamers. But he's not marketing to the casual gamers. There's no television commercials. Um, there's no commercials even on YouTube for this machine. All he's done is gone around to lots of li little different YouTubers and tried to market it to them, and he had that 10-minute E3 spot because the system was at E3 for a whole 10 minutes. Actually, it was 9 minutes and something seconds long. Um, and it's just no one knows about the system. The people he's trying to market the system to don't know the system exists. Now, hardware-wise, the system is slower than a week. And it's coming out, it's supposed to be coming slower out in October. Slower than a Wii. Slower. No, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's as slow as, a, about as slow as a Wii. Yes, it is. It's much slower than a Switch. So, it was leaked. What chip you, it uses? Are you ready for this? What? It uses a budget Snap Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU from 2015. You know what this kind of reminds me of? It's not, but it's not as bad. It kind of reminds me of that of that video game console Soldier Boy made. I don't know if you ever heard about that. No, the, well, that was a Chinese emulation system. This system actually runs uh, original games, even if they're flash-based games that have been reskinned. They're still technically original, I guess, if you want to call them that. But um, Soldier Boy's system was a scam, so. I, I wouldn't call what Tommy Tellerico is doing a scam. I'm, not, I, I'm just saying. I know it's yeah. not a scam. But, um, so basically the Amico runs off of a 2015 Snapdragon. Okay, a Qualcomm Snapdragon. That was a budget chip in 2015. So, it's a mobile phone CPU. That's what it is. Hmm. So, a system being released in 2021, if it even gets released this year, because a lot of people are saying that they aren't done, they haven't built them yet, that the system won't come out till sometime next year. So, a system coming out in either late 2021 or sometime in 2022 is literally using a budget cell phone processor from 2015. That's its hardware. That's ridiculous. It That's is. worse than Nintendo using a Tegra X1 for the Switch in 2017, because technically the Tegra X1 came out in 2014. And yet Nintendo so, knows what they're doing. Yeah. Well, Nintendo makes real games. So mm -hmm. the, a, a lot of the games that are coming... So the Amico can't even do 3D. It, the best it can do is 2.5D. Um, kind of like Primal some of, Rage, like Primal Rage. Yeah, like Primal Rage. Some of the development notes were leaked for the system, and it specifically says, "Do not create environments in 3D." We, like, you can use 2.5D, but do not create any environments in 3D. Why? Because the system can't handle it. It's a budget chipset. It's the same chip that was in a budget hundred-dollar phone in 2015. That's what's running this thing. And the games are all very simple games. 
You cannot have M or R rated games on. Well, there aren't R rated games. R rated games are M rated. You can't have any games that are rated well, higher are E rated for ten. Well, right. There's well in the United States we have M rate. We have M rated games and A rated games. A rated would be like porn games, and M rated games would be seventeen plus like R rated movies. Uh, you cannot put a game on the Miko that is rated E for 10 or high, higher than E for 10. So E for 10 is the highest rating you can have for a game on the Amico. Well then, so, I hope the Amico is a cheap system to the good systems, and they better hope that they have strong material because it sounds like something for children. So that's what their kind of marketing towards right now they have a strong marketing they say they're going to have a strong marketing push towards children and retro gamers because they've taken a, uh, a lot of like old Atari 2600 games and kind of updated the graphics and kind of like reimagined them a bit and put them on the system to try and capture that niche market but that niche retro game market uh, I'll say G Gen Xers are not enough to support the system sales. Um, to really be a success, you need to get families to buy this. But let me ask you a question. What games do little kids actually want to play? Uh, Name three games. Unfortunately, three, 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 three games that are popular with little kids. For some Call reason, it seems to be games like Call of Duty. Mario. Well, so not Mario. Uh, yeah, Mario for a Switch. Yeah, I I'll get to the, the problem with the Switch in a second as well. This thing can go against the Switch. Roadblox, Minecraft, Fortnite, right? Those are three oh, right. of the most those. popular. Those are the three most popular non-Nintendo kid games in the world. And this thing is going up against these. How many little kids do you think are going to be happy when they open up their Christmas present and instead of getting a, a, or or Hanukkah present or holiday present or whatever, anything. You know, how many of these kids are going to be happy when they open an Amico that can't play Fortnite, can't play Mario, can't play Minecraft, and can't play Roblox? None of them are going to be happy. Nope. They're going to want to switch because... All of this family type stuff that the Amico is attempting to say that it does, Nintendo Switches already do. And then some. And then some. Exactly. So the market that he's looking for is not going to show up to buy this thing. I think it will launch and it's going to fail. And if you if you go online to their YouTube channel and to other people's YouTube channels where they're showing off gameplay for games that have already been showcased, they look like Flash games. They literally look like Flash games. And some of them are repurposed games. So they have a bunch of um, edutainment software that's going to be on the Miko, like Sesame Street. Oh, we all know how edutainment games work. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I, like, Nintendo and Sega has dipped their toes in that a bit, and they pretty much nope the fuck out after all those fails. Yeah, well, even on top of that, if you go on the eShop store for the Switch, there's, there is actually tons of edutainment software in there. So, Tommy Tellerico, I in one of his interviews, said that, like, we want to get edutainment back on the market for kids to play on, you know, your 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 65-inch television in, in, in your living room. What, what? What? When did edutainment software stop being on the Switch? There's, pl go, Tommy, go and look on the eShop. There's tons of edutainment software on the eShop for the Switch. What are you talking about? There's tons of it. There's tons of it. There's tons of that. You can find edutainment games on the internet, you can find them probably on any system. Yeah. If you know where to look. Steam 
I bet you there's tons of it on Steam too. There is a couple ton. on Steam. And look, the Sesame Street games that are going to be on the, the Amico. Do you know that there's a version of those games on Sesame Street's webpage for nope. free? How do you like that one? For free. They basically reskinned the Sesame Street games that were already being offered on the Sesame Street webpage, put them on the Amico, and now they cost $10. When what? they're free on the webpage. Seriously. This... It's ridiculous. And this is what Tommy Tellerico is trying to sell us. This is what he's trying to sell us. A seven-year-old budget chipset to run Flash games that are have no more depth to them than games that came out during the NES and all the way back to the Atari 2600 era. He might as well go to try to find the old Newground stuff while he's at it. Probably, yeah. Pretty much. It's it's just, look, it's a mess. It's a mess. And he has said a lot of stuff in his interviews that, I don't know, he shouldn't have said. And I don't even want to get into the drama, you know, with the amount of time and that we have left. He found the big thinkers first grade. And guess how much it cost in Canadian? How much? Seven dollars and eighty cents. Yeah. Even you know Steam I mean? is selling these games this, but cheaper. He claims that the Switch doesn't do what his system does. But the Switch does. He claims that and then some. Yeah, and then some. He claims that there isn't enough edutainment software out there for little kids. There's plenty of edutainment software on plenty of different platforms. What is he talking about? Even people's cell phones app have edutainment games. So here we go. Sadat, man, you... Sadat, you nailed it on the head. You did, definitely. What, what, what do... I want to ask you this question. What do most little kids, and I'm talking toddlers to a little older than that, what do most of them play video games on? The cell phone. Cell phones and tablets. You got it. Hundred mm -hmm. percent. Little when you find a toddler sitting on a couch in front of something, playing away, they're on a tablet or a cell phone. They're not playing on the sixty five inch television in 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 the in the den. Most TVs can be a little too big for little one's eyes in a way. And Tommy Tellerico and is trying to say, we're going to get your little kid to play these entertainment titles on your... No, they don't want to play them on the 65-inch television you did. They play them on their tablets. They play them on their parents' phones. That's where, they're, mm -hmm. that's where these little ones are playing their games. And, it's, and now you can buy, you know, like the, the cases so you can put your iPads and your surfaces in cases so that you can hand it to your toddler and not have to worry about them tossing it across the room and cracking mm -hmm. the thing. And, but, but that's it. That's where they're playing these games. They're playing them on tablets and cell phones. It's true because when I come, you've got, you see all those, all those kids like at restaurants or so. They're playing, the, playing games on cell phones or tablets so that they bring them everywhere. So yeah, that's or at the, at the park and stuff. So yeah, it's very yeah. good. Yeah. So what? What's the, so he says? Well, we're marketing this toward retro enthusiasts. Okay, all I don't know. What are you going to sell? A hundred thousand units total to that niche market? Hundred thousand units is not enough to keep a console going, right? No. Well, well, there's three billion casual gamers and families in the world. Okay, uh, one, they're using cell phones and tablets. If they wanted consoles, they'd buy consoles. They'd buy a Switch because the closest console to casual gamers already exists, and that's the Switch. 
And if you're talking about people who don't want a Switch or want an actual console, well, they all have phones and they all have tablets, and that's what they're playing on, and that's what their kids are playing on. And you're not going to get phone and tablet gamers and phone tablet kids to buy your console and play it in the den. It's not going to happen. It's a dead-on-arrival product. If he would have launched this back around when the Wii was launched, and by the way, he keeps using the Wii as the comparison, not the Switch, because um, the Amico uses motion control controllers kind of like the Wii. It's, so it's like it's a, it's it's a, you, you're ten year, yeah you're ten years too late on that gimmick. He's literally using motion control controllers similar to Wii motes. 15 years after the Wii came out. There's a reason why Nintendo still, still yes, has motion controls on the Joy-Cons, but there's a reason why they also added back in con- traditional controller controllers mm-hmm. to the Switch, because they knew that just having motion controls like the Wiimote was a gimmick, and it ran its course, and they know that. They know there's a place for it, but they, but there's also... A place they for just much, controllers. They pretty much gave us options because some of us like the wireless motion control stuff more than just like A, 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 B, X, B. Yeah. And there's some people that just like hitting the buttons more for various reasons. Yeah, and Tommy Tellerica will say, I want to bring back the generation of people who just love having friends over to play Wii Bowling in their living room. I don't know, you missed the boat. You missed the boat. Everything's gone online. Back when Wii Bowling was popular and Wii Sports and Wii, uh, Wii Resort, and back when that stuff was popular, that was before online gaming was... Such a strong force. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it almost didn't even exist at that point. It, it, it existed in a very limited fashion. And I mean, we, when, we it had did, it. when it we, did come up, it was like, whoa, mind yeah. blown. Oh, right, whoa, I mean, dude. we did have Xbox Live, because Xbox Live started a couple years before that on the original Xbox. Um, but, you know, it still hadn't come on, had come into its own. There was no Twitch. There was no streaming yet. Um, but now we're living in a different era. And he's like, well, I want to bring that back. Well, I don't think people want that back. And plus we have emulators. And people are selling their older Wii systems. As yeah, we- well as, like, pretty much selling well, uh, packaged Wii, Wii Spor- systems. Wii Sports is... I think it's pretty expensive online, but still, you're right. You can still buy a Wii. So I think you can Wii still Sports. Still buy a Wii if you know where to look. Yeah, Wii Sports and Wii is still cheap. I mean, to get an Amico is two hundred fifty dollars, three hundred dollars if you want the purple one, and then the controllers. You ready for this? Are seventy dollars a piece. So it comes with two controllers. If you want four controllers for four players, that's you you you're getting up to about four hundred dollars. It's not cheap. No. This system should be a hundred bucks. If this system was a hundred dollars or even a hundred fifty dollars, I think we'd be having a different conversation. We'd be saying, "Oh, it's like a little novelty toy." Oh, cool, right? But at two hundred fifty dollars, it's not a little novelty toy. It's expensive. It's an investment. They need to drop the price, and then maybe we'll have a different conversation about it. Here's, here's the only smart thing that they did do. There's a cell phone app that allows a cell phone to function as a controller. They say not as efficiently as, a, as an actual Amico controller, but they say you can take your Galaxy or your iPhone 10, 11, 12, and you ins- install the app. And it will let you use the cell phone as another controller. Hmm. 
in before the cell phone works better than the actual controllers. I know, wouldn't that be <laughs> hilarious? <laughs> I've actually, you know what, a lot of people have made that joke. A lot of people have said, I bet you the cell phones work better than the actual controllers. <laughs> people it's just so true people have said that over and over and over but yeah well, now, now you see now we can is. be added to the groups that have made that joke list <laughs> exactly look at that 299.99 gamestop.com gamestop.com galaxy purple and television amico and that's everything i have to say on it right now you know we we can Sometimes sit down and maybe talk about the drama and that surrounds a lot of the stuff that Tommy has said in interviews, uh, the drama that surrounds a lot of the stuff that has been said about Tommy that isn't true, that is true, but that's not really what I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to talk about the specifics of what the system was and why I think that his target market isn't going to buy it and why it will eventually just fail. True, yeah. I think we could save that kind of topic for like a miscellaneous type video. Yeah, Yeah, because that's more of just a lot of drama stuff. So that's why I didn't really want to push into that and why I kind of really focused on what the machine was targeting and why I didn't think it would be able to hit that target. And simply my one word answer is uh, gimmicky controllers and Nintendo Switch. Yep, that's definitely true. But that's pretty much all we gotta say for this episode. Be stay tuned, we're tuned because episode 15 will be up soon, so be on the lookout for that. And my cat Dexter is in here now. Hello, ah. Dexter. But be on the lookout because we got because the game reviews will continue flying. It's still flying game months, so be on the lookout for that. And who knows? Maybe so the, I know we said next episode will be live, and we still haven't had time to fix the issues because I, because I had a busy schedule with work and everything. But one day, one day, GT Burger will get us on live. It will, definitely. In fact, like, the, we may have some guests coming up, uh, some special guests coming up in, the, in, in future episodes as well. So oh! Like as well. But that's all we gotta say there. This is Tony, Grim Island, and Sedet, the Hyper Princess, Peace. Now have a good night. All, Dexter, a stop trying to type on the keyboard. Yeah, so yeah, Dexter, you know you what's wrong with you? just type in human. Yeah, that's pretty much all we gotta <laughs> say. Um, while, while, while the cat runs loose, this is Tony, Sedet, and Grim Island, Peace. Now have Cat's a great out day. of the bag. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. In the words of Lucky Happy Gordon, gaming, Happy gaming to you all. Good night.